Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining Hashtag No Limits. I am your host, Shelly Kino, as a special education teacher and now currently as an education consultant and master IEP coach. I often see limits that people place upon others. It's not that these are necessarily physical limits, but these are limits that we have in our brains that just automatically say, oh, well, that person can't do this or they'll never do that. And I bring this show to you because I am trying to change that perspective and give as much exposure to all kinds of different people who have had limits placed on them, but who have bust through those limits. Ophelia tells us in Hamlet that we know who we are, but not who we may be. And I do not believe that there is a better example of that than the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. We often don't see the beauty that's within by only looking at the outside. And the caterpillar has to literally dissolve itself and reform itself into a butterfly. And then the butterfly has to struggle and fight to get its wings strong enough to get out of the cocoon in order to be able to fly. That is no easy task and neither is breaking down these limits and busting through these limits if you are someone who's had these limits placed upon you. I had the privilege and honor of going through a few week course with Matthew recently and I got to know him a little bit and felt like, you know, he is definitely a caterpillar who has turned into a butterfly and I wanted to share his story with you. So Matthew, thank you for being with me today and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's a great pleasure to uh, be speaking to not only the UK public, but also the uh, American public. So nice to speak to you all. Thank you. Yeah. And um, some of you that have watched my show before, I think I've mentioned that I lived in the UK for three years. And I told Matthew before we started, I said, I won't do it on purpose, but I may throw in some British terms that I remember, or I may start to mimic the British accent. So you guys can laugh at me if I do any of that sort of stuff. But so Matthew, tell us about yourself. Tell us what your childhood was like. My childhood was um, was, was fantastic uh, at, in the house, definitely. Um, I, I, um, I'm the youngest of, uh, of, of two uh, siblings. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite privileged to have been uh, been fortunate to have a fam to be with a family who are um, very loving, very caring, and uh, just very, very just just brilliant to be around. And um, yeah, they uh, from a young age they knew that um, something was different about me. They just couldn't put their finger on it until I was about. 10 or 11 years old and then uh, it was by that point I was diagnosed with um, with mild autism and um, uh, Asperger syndrome disorder or what th what they now call um, ASD today right so, but, um, um, sorry go ahead no uh, please continue well, I was just going to ask you what the British school system is like, because here in the United States, we have a federal law that guides how we are to um, incorporate our kiddos who learn differently into our public education system. Um, and I, you know, having lived in the UK, I did notice, um, you know, there's some similarities, of course, between the schooling systems and there's some differences in like the ages of what's expected. And um, as far as when you have to determine what you're going to do with the rest of your life, I feel like you guys do that a whole lot younger than we do that here in the United States. Um, but I mean, I think pretty much, you know, you, you have your, um, your schooling every year. And so how, how did you, uh, how were you received in the public school system there in the UK? Um, I in the classrooms, I was received um, okay. Um, granted, uh, in the social aspect, it was it was tough at times. Um, I did experience bullying at school, but um, but I did not let that uh, phase me in the end because I I just carried on carried on working hard, carried on trying my best to to just carry to get to where I needed to be which was my ultimate goal, which was uh, I always said I wanted to go to university and study. I always wanted to be 
uh, the first of my family to do so. And uh, lo and behold, I was. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. I came out with a um, w- with a BA honours in uh, drama. So nice. At the, at the University of Hull. It was a great experience in the end. That's wonderful. So can you speak, um, and if this is too too close to home or too difficult to speak to, please don't, but could you speak to a little bit of the bullying, uh, the types of behaviors that that you um, exhibited that you feel maybe led to the bullying and then the kind of behaviors that you exhibited because of the bullying? Um, I guess uh, with regards to that, the main the main um, aspect was uh, the, it, it was mainly due to, uh, being different I guess if you're not part of that niche group you were you were just like cast out in a way um there was there was always uh there was always like a, a group if you weren't the popular kids at school it's, it's almost very similar actually to the stereotypical um in a way American high school if you were if you're not the like you know one of the popular kids you were always mm-hmm. you know one of the the downtrodden or uh, people who are just left in the, you know, left out and all that lot. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it's a different, different way of describing it, but it, in a way, similar aspects. Uh, but to be fair, I, it was mainly due to um, people not understanding people being like, you know, kids being kids uh, in some, some aspects. I mean, not, not every child is like that, but just sure. you have the odd one. You have the odd one who is very um, well ignorant towards like your differences as a person, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, f- for some reason you go through life not liking certain people and people not liking you. Um, it's 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 a fact of life. It does happen, and uh, yeah, I've experienced that on a number of occasions. I, I was I was bullied a lot at school. Um, and uh, often put in put in a corner a lot of the time. Um, just uh, just being it's just being different. It was hard. It, it was that was the hardest part about it. Or I think it was just because because I thought differently to others. Because I was because I I guess it was just um, yeah, just really really difficult to adapt and um, get on with. Uh, a lot of people but funnily enough a lot of the people who um some of the people who used to bully me at school are actually on my uh <laughs> I actually uh talk to them now sometimes when I when I see them around and uh I don't granted I don't see them a lot um it's it's not sure. like they're like in my besties or anything like that um it's you, you just see them now and again and you just say oh you're right you're right and then yeah. just like talk about life and all that lot and everything. Yeah, it, it, these things do happen though. It's because I, I suppose in a way it's because uh, people had the freedom of, you know, they they don't have the realities of life coming into their lives at that point. So they're they're they, you know they educate they're going for education. They're not worried about the world stresses and all that lot. But I guess now that the real world's hit them, they've they've grown up yeah. and now they're the, now they're the parents and now they have to set an example and all that lot. And um, that's what I think's happened. Really. A lot of them have, you know, become, become adults themselves and have realized, you know, ah, oh, that, wow. We, we're the ones now that have to set the right example for our youngsters to be good at school and all that. lot. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So for some people that would be tough for other people that they've got on with it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good to see that things have changed now for them. And I so appreciate your compassion because as you said, there are some people that would not have gotten through that or been able to carry on after those situations and, and to be able to be friendly to the, the person or persons who did this to you and I think you're right. I think a lot of children are curious and maybe because they don't understand the differences, it makes them uncomfortable. And therefore their way to react to that is, you know, to, to make fun or to, to bully. Um, you mentioned though, that you, you were put in the corner. Was that 
Did you mean that literally? Oh no no no! Of course not. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a figure of expression. Yeah, yeah. Okay. By putting a corner, I mean I'm like I, I just felt that I was the outside looking in and that friends list. I wasn't one of those, one of those people who was, you know, with the big crowd and all that lot. So I was always one of the outsiders in a way. Yeah, um, and that's I, just what it felt like at the time. Yeah, and going back to the education system. Did you have an adapted curriculum or did you have any sort of special um, classes or any, um, cause here in the United States, we have what we call IEPs, which are individualized education programs. So it's a, it's a whole process that um, people go through to qualify for that. And then it's a document that kind of directs their special education. Um, it, sure. is, how does that work in the UK? Um, we, we do have, um, we, we do have special schools uh, for for people with special needs. We do have like special schools designed just for them. Um, but generally, uh, I I went through the standard education system myself. Okay. Just with like added support in certain lessons and stuff like that. Um, but uh, mainly, it was with exams. I got the got the added support such as um, extra time in like at the end of an exam. If, the, if mm -hmm. the time was up, that was it. But no, I got an extra like, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like that, um, which, which yeah, uh, you can, you can apply for when, when doing exams, if not, not just in the case of special needs, but in the case of like um, stress or unhappiness and all, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, Generally, when you're struggling as well, like yeah. really, really struggling, sometimes they will allow you, they'll, they'll exempt you an extra like 15 minutes just to give you um, extra time and stuff like that during your exam. But um, but we do have support workers in schools for, for like people um, who, who have who have like spe uh, learning difficulties and stuff like that. Um, I was I was actually quite honoured myself, really, for being uh, the first person, one of the first people at uh, my university to recognise this, and we formed the first um, disabled students council oh, wow. in the in the uh, in the in that in that university. And um, I was on, I was I was on the committee, but I wasn't like a, a key role. I was just um, someone on the committee who was happy to lend their voice to um discussions and stuff in meetings um but overall though i it it, it started off quite strangely because uh, what it was um a lot of people were talking about the way the disabled were treated at the university and they weren't treated badly but there was a lot of things that could be incorporated to help them mm -hmm. and uh the head of the student education at the time uh of the of the student committee he was he was deep he was in he was in tears when he was told about this he was he was deeply upset because he was a really strong supporter of trying to make everybody's lives at university happy and and you know yeah. get the education out there um and he he saw this and we we he wanted to form a committee because he we didn't have one Right. At, um, at that university at the time. So it was it was great privilege to, you know, be there to witness him like and and his passion for education and support for the disabled was just absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I really do thank thank this person for, for forming it because he, he, he was a good chap. Um, uh, I'll give I'll give him a shout. Out. His name's Chris Marks, and that's a shout out for you, my friend. Thank you so much for everything you did at that university. You're a, you're a legend. Um, but but generally, uh, overall though, it was it was good to support support uh, this forming of this committee, and also in general, uh, the support I got there was very good uh, as well. I got um, somebody into uh, type type for me during the exam mm -hmm. I just I just spoke uh what I wanted written mm -hmm. and um I also got like uh, a computer and um a dragon program so I could 
speak to the screen rather than type but in okay. the end I chose I chose to do my own typing in the end <laughs> so <laughs> though I didn't though I didn't use the tools they were there when I needed the, if I needed them yeah and uh also um as well I uh I had a um disabled student counselor in my uh in my department which was a um a great lecturer a, a professor um <laughs> Mr. Tony Meach also give a mention to him because he was an absolutely brilliant lecturer. Uh, I learned, I, I did a few of his classes. He, he was, he was fantastic. Great, great to work with. And one of the things I really, really enjoyed about what he said to me was one of the things I'll never, I'll never forget. He said to me, when you first came to this university, I, I really thought because of the hardships, because of everything you've you're going you, you go through with this, I I I really really didn't think you would you would hack it, you know, because it's a new experience and you sure. know it's hard. But you proved me wrong. And when he told me those words, I was like, absolutely, it's probably one of the proudest moments I had. Yeah. When he told me that, and this is and this is a professor who's been all over the all over the Europe as his specialty was German theatre and and learning all these different things about about the art of German theatre about Brecht and all that lot he was very very devoted to that uh, field and I proved him wrong by you know going getting through university and to do that was just mind-blowing yeah that that brought tears to my eyes to just think of how huge that moment must have been for both of you, honestly, but even more so for you. And I'm, I'm so impressed with him that he was able to see a bias that he had in himself. And that bias was challenged because of his interactions with you. And he changed yeah. it. Uh, yeah, and he was, he was great. It was great just to see how much of an impact it made on himself. But like, supporting supporting people who had the con who had conditions and disability and stuff like that he, but then yeah as 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 the counselor for that for that department he was you know it he it was just it was just great to talk to because sometimes i would i would actually go and speak to him in general about my general feeling with regards to some lectures and classes and all that lot I was concerned about anything I was he, he said um just come and talk to me and I and I, and I used to do it so that is yeah, so yeah. wonderful great it's so it's so awesome to hear that there are people around the world that are doing that sort of thing that they are trying to um what I do is I try to make the world better for all one IEP at a mm. time now you know you guys don't have IEPs but it's the same concept you know that um, we're all trying to give everyone as much education as they want and yeah. that we're not limiting who can have what education they want. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that that's happening. I had a gentleman on several months back who was from Australia and he was saying that, you know, they're doing similar things there as well. So it gives me great hope that it's not just here in the U S that we are struggling and, but continuing to grow um, and mm -hmm. doing better that it's happening all across the world. So yes. can you be a little more specific um, about the, the um, I'm trying to think of the, how you, how you described it, your differences, basically, that's not the word you used, but um, sure. th that, you know, when you were a child, you said you were just different. So, like, d was it behaviors? Was it characteristics? Um, and the reason I ask this question is because I feel as parents, we do a disservice to our children when we don't directly instruct them, hey, you know, if this person has a little bit of a different walk or they have a little bit of a different speech pattern uh, or they don't have eye contact or whatever, you know, whatever the, the differences are. Um, if we don't directly teach them that those things are okay, then they think that there's something not okay about them. 
Um, and so that's why I'm kind of wanting you to explain some of those different things that were about you that you said just, you know, put you in the corner and that your family even knew something was a little different. Yeah, okay. With regards to that, um, no, I agree. It, a lot of it is is definitely uh, behavioral. But at the same time, um, you, you just have every, – everybody's different. Everybody mm -hmm. has different traits. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's the same with people on the on the spectrum. We all have different traits. Mm -hmm. uh, not no one spectrum is the same. Everybody has different levels, different like um, different traits. Such as um, one one of the one of the key ones uh, that I don't have is is uh, sensitivity issues. So sensitivity to hearing, mm -hmm. to uh, to direct sunlight, various things. Um, am I thinking about vampires here? No, anyway. <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah. both. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But no. Um, my my key ones, if I'm if I'm going to be honest, uh, my key the key traits that I have that I know isn't isn't typical neuro thinking is um the way to uh, respond to um. Way to, the way to respond to people's uh, reactions sometimes I, I I do I still do sometimes struggle with that such as um, how to respond to someone when they're joking respond to someone when they're um, when because because everything to me is is very um, some sometimes it's very black and white rather mm -hmm. than gray mm -hmm. um, it's either good or bad there's no middle ground I, I always used to think like that. It, mm -hmm. if, it, if somebody was doing something that was wrong or right, but in the middle, you, you don't give them a chance to explain that you're either wrong or you're right. But there is okay. always this middle ground. No, I'm getting, I'm getting better at, I'm getting better at noticing it now. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it was, it, it took me a lot of years to figure out that there is a lot more to reasoning rather than just black and white. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. It, it is pretty much there. There is this grey line where people have their have um, uh, situations within within their within their lives that they that they just can't control, and stuff like that. Or some people have uh, reasons for doing the things they do, but we we just don't see that. We just see the you know, oh, they've done this. Right. That they must be wrong rather than that, but. I mean, that's that's one of the key ones. Just trying to trying to figure out how pe how to respond to people who do things they do, um, yeah. like jokes and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm getting better, but it's just sometimes I struggle figuring out what's wit and what is someone being serious. Right. Like yeah, like what, I... what we call banter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so. When you would think that someone was wrong, mm. what sort of reaction would you have to them? Uh, it depends on the severity of what they did. If um, if it was just like a simple, I don't know, if it was just a simple somebody, you know, bumped into somebody and not said sorry, I'd just be like, no, really, yeah, typical. But then it, but if someone like hurt somebody or like. I don't know, or did something that was wrong, like a criminal act or something like that. I would, I wouldn't, I would be like, how, how could you do that? You know, that's just, right. that's just wrong. That's cruel. Right. Um, how do you respond when someone is giving you advice that you haven't asked for? Or, um, I mean, you said that your degree is in drama. So I'm sure. sure as a performer, there will be people who won't like something about your performance. Mm. Um, how do you deal with that? Uh, at the end of the day, you just, uh, mo most of the time I, t I take it with a, with a pinch of salt. Uh, I mean, deep, deep down inside, I will... It, it does affect me sometimes, I'm not going to lie, especially when it comes to like auditions that you failed, um, or what, what I like to say is failed rather than didn't succeed is probably the nicer way of saying it. 
But um, I mean, it's constructive some of the time, and uh, no, I mean, I've not really ever had someone who'd say put blatantly that you that you were just bad okay. because um, that's nice. <laughs> That's not that's so far so good. That is nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know how I would react if I actually did hear someone say, Oh, you you were just absolutely terrible. Why were you even there? You know. Right. I, I just I'm just awaiting the day that does happen, how I will respond to that, because I'm I'm not sure how yet. But in general, like um ge generally people are actually quite nice about it. They they offer you constructive advice and um hope hope that you use it into the next uh, next audition when you when you do your next one and and to be fair i have like in in general um auditions recently that i haven't succeeded at i've actually been quite close at getting them and i mean mm. they've even said it themselves like um i auditioned um a little while ago for the lead in the wedding singer uh, oh, wow. the musical yeah yeah mm -hmm. i auditioned for that i, I didn't get it and um, but then there was a situation involving the lead, and uh, the, the role was up for up for up for debate again hmm. because uh, the the lead the lead actor got injured and couldn't continue the show. So um, the, the the lead was up for grabs again. But um, to to play it to play it safe, the company brought someone in to hmm. um, to play the role, which. Um, which I, I totally get. I mean, uh, we didn't get the we didn't get the role last time. Why why do we deserve it now? But but the director was kind enough to to um, speak to me and another person who didn't get it and explain the situation to us. And we were like, no, that's fair enough. Oh, At the end of the day, I'm I'm just happy to do the show. I'm I'm right. I'm not I'm not upset about it because I knew it was going to be a tough role to get. Yeah. But. But it's just it's great fun, and uh, and that's how I saw it. At the end of the day, it was it was okay. I understood his reasons, and his reasons were he said, "Look, I would I would happily work with either with either of you, but we had to go we had to go with the safe option, mm -hmm. and go and go for an actor who's who's done the role before. He knows what he's he knows what we need, and he will do it justice. And it was a great honor to work with him because yeah, he was a former. Um, He's been a former West End performer. Oh wow! And uh, it was a great honor to work with him. Yeah, he was a he did um, he did the musical Spamalot in the West End, and uh, yeah, it was it was great. It it was great. He, he's he's brilliant. He's a brilliant performer, and um, yeah. Good. So it was for a those to finally got to work with him. For those who are watching in the United States, you're when you refer to the West End, that's very similar to our Broadway. Um, right in that it's it's like the that that's like the big that time. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. The West End is our uh, is our Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, down in London. Oh, I miss London. <laughs> it's been it's been two decades since I've been in England, and I just, I still want to come back wow. sometime. So, yeah. Well, I hope you do. I hope you do because uh, I would love to go to the states one day. Yeah. Well, maybe we can work that out somehow that we can swap houses for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've never been to the US. I don't know where, where, where would be recommended because there's so many. One of the things I'll give the States credit for is there's so many different types of um, types of like land you have yeah. in the States. You have desert, you have you have forests you have uh like oh wow it's yeah. just it i mean is, we, we pretty much have nice. it all you know we've got mountains we've all. got oceans we've got like you said we've got the forests we've got the deserts we've got snow we've got tornadoes hurricanes um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pretty much not, everything not all good things but yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um the, the cold that's the that's the thing like today right now it is and i was going to do the conversion um i think it's about 34 here um so yeah. so that's like 80 fahrenheit but i think 34 is approximately what it is 30 30 somewhere in there um celsius it's warm mm. where i am it i'm in warm. Yeah. yeah i'm basically in the middle of the country um 
So we get the extreme heat, we get the extreme cold here, we get snow, we get hot, we get um, all the seasons, although sometimes spring only lasts a day um, <laughs> because it'll be really cold and then it'll be nice and temperature wise and then it'll be super hot. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there, it is a, it is a, it's a beautiful country. I'm sure I'm a little biased, but um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things to see in this country that I've never seen. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, do I go overseas or do I drive to the places here where I haven't already seen, but Okay. Um, so sorry about that. We just kind of digressed there. So, so let's get back That's to fine. your, um, so the acting that you do, is that sure. your main income or do you have to have another job? Yeah. Um, my main income is I'm, I work as a, a laborer at, um, okay. a, a waste transfer site. That is my main job. Um, okay. but I, my my biggest dream will always be to get into the business somehow into the mm -hmm. business somehow i'm i'm working towards that and uh hopefully eventually it will happen but for now i uh, for now i'm i'm content with uh with uh acting my way through through 50 or 60 odd tons of waste every day so yeah it's, oh. you know it's all good yeah. Yeah. You can just pretend that you're somebody else when you're doing that. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's okay. It, the, the jobs, the jobs, uh, the job's got its perks. Yeah. Definitely. So is, do you ever find in the workplace similar hmm. situations to what you found when you were a child where maybe someone is, is joking, but you a don't find it funny and so therefore you feel like you don't fit in with the group at the moment um or b that people don't understand your i mean you said you're you're starting to be able to see the gray in situations but you're still pretty much very black and white in situations do you ever find yourself in either of those situations now uh not as often now as i would have like a year ago I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit more content with the group because I've because I've like got to know them a little a little better and all that. Like, and we, it, it, they are they are a good bunch. They good. they they love their banter though, and it's yeah. you know, and they and they you know sometimes I will admit I do think sometimes think oh, okay uh, are you joking are you not joking that that sort of situation comes up quite a lot, yeah. and uh, I have to. I have to get uh, clarification sometimes, but other than that, it's all good. It's all good. Good. So when you get that clarification, do you get that from the person that you weren't sure if they were joking or serious, or do you? How do you oh, get they, that clarification? Yeah, yeah. They they will they'll say they're just joking. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. So they they understand that you might not always understand their their sense of humor. Um, my and so they're, my they're, boss is very understanding. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. My, my boss, my boss is a very understanding chap, and he uh, he's re he really has uh, helped me through helped me through a lot of situations. So the social thing, I know, um, I, I know many people who have autism or autistic tendencies or on the ASD spectrum, or um, and many many of the people that I know have mm -hmm. that that social cue or that. Um, the ability to read a, a situation um, is a difficulty for them. So you've said you've gotten better about it. Did you, did you get help from someone? Did you like, how, did it suddenly become, oh, okay, I get what they're doing now. I mean, how did that process happen? I think um, if I'm going to be honest, uh, a lot of it was um, through conversations with my mother. She she really has helped like a lot of the time when I've been struggling or like having having difficult situations. Uh every time I come home she'll be like, Are you okay? Is everything good? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, things are fine and she says, You're lying. I can tell when you're lying. <laughs> Mom's no mother's intuition. Mother's <laughs> intuition, yeah, exactly. Yep. I yeah, yeah, and oh no. She she knows when I'm not um when I'm not a happy chap and she will always get it out of me no matter what it is because 
you know, it's 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 a mother it's a mother's love for a child. That's what it right. is. Right. Absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that your that your mother recognized that and was able to take the time, and that you were able to learn from it and then apply it. You know, the next time a similar situation came up, because no two social situations are exactly the same. So our societal hmm. norms or rules are not easily applied every time. So it's being able to read the situation and, and know the person maybe, or persons that you're interacting with. Um, I think that definitely would be helpful. Um, and so I, I'm, that's, that's just something I've always found really interesting um, with, like I said, the people that I know that have that is just trying to figure out, you know, how can I help them do okay in those situations? Um, because I don't want people to be bullied because they didn't yeah. understand a joke or they didn't understand a, a situation. And I think that's also where that comes from too, is, you know, people when they don't understand, again, I, I really do think a lot of things come down to when they don't understand a situation or they don't understand why someone's not reacting a certain way, it makes them uncomfortable and they have to try to do something to get rid of their own uncomfortableness. And sadly, that's often at the expense of somebody else. Yes, that is, that is definitely, um, definitely right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of time it has happened that, um, yeah, they, they don't understand you as a person. They try and, and they, and then when, what they don't understand, they, 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 uh, either go one of two ways, either go away from it or, or, uh, I guess, um, or I guess challenge it. Yeah. I suppose you probably find more people that you don't know personally, like, you know, at the, at the local, um, oh, I just had the name of the grocery store that I always went to there. Now Tesco's, is there, is it Tesco's? Is that a yeah, grocery? Tesco. Yeah. Okay. Tesco's is our main grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I imagine yeah. like when you interact with people there, you know, that that's, mm. or, you know, the local pub that you don't know that that's where you, you find more of those uncomfortable situations because you don't know everyone and vice versa. Um, and so you, you, it's harder to tell if they're joking or being serious or if it's a situation that you want to continue in, or if you need to back away from versus, you know, your family and your friends and your coworkers. Yeah. I mean, uh, with regards to, with regards to like going to a grocery store or, or going to a pub, if I'm if I'm in there on my own, I'll just keep to myself. I won't like I won't speak to anybody except the people I'm interacting with, like the checkout lady or the um, or the bartender or someone like that. Mm -hmm. um, you usually I just uh, usually in those situations, if I'm in, on my own in a place like that, I'll just uh, I'll just stick to myself like and until someone talks to me and then I'll happily speak back. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes that's even perceived as, uh, I mean, as long as you speak back, it's, it's probably not as perceived this way, but you know, oftentimes because of the, maybe the fear of having a wrong interaction, people don't interact at all. And then they're thought of as being standoffish or aloof or a snob or, you know, and it's, it's that assuming mm. you know what someone is going through or the reasons behind their behavior that, you know, drive our thoughts. Um, so we were, we were talking before we went live about um, some upcoming drama projects that you are possibly going to be in or are in, or I, you, you started and then you're like, wait, no, I'm going to wait till we get on air. So <laughs> now's your chance sure. to tell about that. Right. Uh, yeah. The key, the key ones um, I'm working on at the minute. Um, there's two, there's two main ones. Um, well, uh, actually there's quite, there's quite a few actually, but I'll, <laughs> I'll go through them quite, I'll go through them quite briefly. Uh, the main, the main ones that I know of, uh, one of them is currently uh, slowly being released. It's on Facebook. It's called uh, the viral murders. Oh. And 
what it is is uh it's a online murder mystery uh set in um uh, well um it's uh, it's about a, a vengeful killer intent on causing um causing as much uh harm and manipulation as possible to get what get to get what they want oh wow and uh and uh yeah we uh, we we all play uh, different characters within this murder mystery, and uh, yeah, it's um, it's gone really well. We are on uh, episode four, part two, at the moment, okay. and uh, you can you can catch them all on the Facebook page, uh, the Viral Murders, um, and uh, you can follow the links to various websites on the page. Which uh, give you clues and um, and access to the episodes. It's completely free, so anybody can watch them and listen to them. It's uh, yeah, it's it's great fun, and it was great fun to do. Uh, yeah. all, vo- all voice recorded. There's no visuals, uh, oh, so okay. it's it's all, almost like a radio drama essentially. Uh-huh. But it's uh, it's it's very. I, I think it adds to the mystery in a way. Yeah, I suppose because you don't know these characters, you can't see their faces directly. Right. But but you can hear their different personas, mm-hmm. and um, it really, really is is very is very effective. And I I do like that style of murder, of story, uh, because I used to listen to um, like uh, audio dramas as well for various different things. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just um, I re- I really like audio dramas, and I highly recommend them. They're really really good. So are there uh, several, because you said you're on episode four, part two. So are there several already recorded? So this will be going on for quite some time, or do you record them kind of as you're going? Uh, the, the, uh, the series has already been recorded. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we, finished, we finished recording the series um, in, in, a, in and around January. Oh, okay. So, um, so what we're doing now is just uh, releasing them slowly, and giving the audience enough time to um, respond to the previous episodes, look at the clues, and um, start to, I guess, make up their own minds on who they think the killer is. Right. And um, and yeah, uh, we just um, we we do behind the scenes work and stuff like that as part of the company, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's it's um it's it's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed working with with the group as well. I think they're, they're called the the Mystery Lounge. Oh, and they're based in the uh, in the city of uh, Stoke on Trent. Oh, I I know that city. I've been there. <laughs> it's beautiful there. Um, it is very nice there. So the how often do the episodes come out on Facebook? Uh, usually fortnightly. Okay. So that's two so, weeks for those of yeah, us in the yeah. United States. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's uh, every two weeks, and okay. um, yeah, you can find them so, on the on the page. Yeah. So for those of you watching, you probably just realized that uh, I didn't record this and then air it right away. So um, there may be another episode out or two by the time this actually airs. So um, do you know how many episodes are still to come from where you're at right now? Uh, I would say another another five, uh, another oh, okay. five full episodes. So. Okay. Good. So those of you that you know, when you're watching this, when this does broadcast, you'll still have time to go back and watch and catch up and maybe figure it out before it's actually revealed who done it. Um, so is there a prize other than just the "Hey, I did it" for figuring it out? There, there is a there is a prize. Um, oh, nice. I I. I don't know myself what it is, but uh, there okay. is a prize for uh, for the winner of Very and who cool. figures out who it is. Yeah, that's awesome. So, what other projects do you have going on? That one's awesome. Um, I'm I'm excited to look for that one when we're finished recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff I have been doing is um, uh, I have a couple of um, short short film projects in the pipeline as well. Um, I've been working on. Um, uh, a a production with uh, a group called Gatling Gun, um, based in Leicestershire. 
It's called um, uh, Master Homes, hmm. and it's sort of based on the. Uh, it, it's it's sort of like if uh, we saw Sherlock Holmes in in his younger days, in his school college days. Oh, okay. So um, it's sort of like yeah. So you've got the main character as as Sherlock, and you've got because um, it, it's all derived from the. Um, we I think they must have got inspiration from the Sherlock um, modern series, mm-hmm. um, as as there's a lot of there's a lot of relevance to the characteristics of Sherlock in that. But um, yeah, it's very, it's it's really great great fun to great fun to do. I I, I play Mycroft, his uh, his his older less popular brother, and <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, it's it's just great fun because every time I go on set um at uh at the master home set i i i see i see the actor who plays sherlock and i ju- we just go straight into character straight away we're just like uh you know saying hello to each other in our characters and just uh being all smug to one another <laughs> because <laughs> as know, siblings would be um, yeah. <laughs> as siblings would be absolutely yeah and um it, it's it's brilliant i i've really had great fun working on it um i can't wait to carry on but obviously due to covid restrictions we've we've not been able to start up right. again yet but i'm hoping it, i'm hoping soon we'll we'll have it we'll have a finished series on that um also been working on a um working on a original story somebody made called dusk man um which is a uh, quite quite similar to Batman, but just uh, a okay. different take on it. It's sort uh-huh. of like we're we're looking at the psychological aspects of somebody through the use of superheroes, and um, sort of like he's he's like a uh, one of those uh, rock stars who um, who's falling on tough times and stuff like that. And he meets this girl and he's like trying to be, you know, the perfect gentleman, but situations in his life keep making, keep making things awkward for him. And he feels the only way he can resolve this is by going into his head and being this character who's not, who's based on, who's okay. Based on Batman. I I can't, (laughs) I can't deny that. I mean, I mean, it's, I can't. I can't deny that a lot of the characters yeah. are based on like uh, on Batman and all that. Like, but uh-huh. it's great fun. It's great fun to play in it, and uh, the the director's a very very fun guy. And uh, yeah, it's it's just um, it's just brilliant to work with um, these different groups. Uh, th- this this group um, is uh, alongside with a group called Glenn Allen McFinney Productions. I recommend um, their film The Rock Man. Which is uh, actually on Amazon Prime. If you if you if you got Amazon Prime, you could. Mm-hmm. I think the Rockman's still up on that. You can find it. Okay. It's a three. It's a three part series. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm sure you. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And um, I'm also working on a play with a group called uh, the Thringston Pantomime and Drama Society, uh, which is also based in Leicestershire. We're doing a, a a play soon called Surprise Package. Um, which was written in the 70s by, uh, hang on, I've actually got the book up here. <laughs> uh, Samuel French, actually, yeah, who's a famous playwright. And the, and the book um, Surprise Package uh, by Duncan Greenwood and Derek Parks is about, um, it's a farcical comedy for four men and seven women. And it's called The Tinsley Package Holiday Proves to be an even greater change from Blackpool than expected. I'm reading off the back of the blurb here. Yeah. <laughs> to start with, it seems young Ron has persuaded his father to book the same hotel as Gloria, the girl Ron loves, despite the disapproval of her mother, who also turns up. Everyone becomes involved in general misunderstandings. Trousers and teeth are lost in awkward circumstances. A storm at sea brings both tensions and floods of water through the roof. Havoc is wrought in the hearts of both Gloria's mother and Alfred's sister-in-law by Herr Grotz, and the final <laughs> surprise shatters everyone. So wow. yeah, so that that's interesting. How, yeah, so it's it's a farcical comedy, and um, it's great fun. Um, I, I got I got to play the role of I'm I'm playing the role of um, Herr Grotz, who's a okay. German 
a German tourist who, who goes to the uh, place. And uh, yeah, it, it's good. It's good to put to put on that German again because um, I had great fun playing uh, uh, Franz Liebkin in the producers. So I had oh, great wow. fun with the German accent. It's it's great. Good times. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, it sounds like you were certainly staying busy, and I'm very happy for you to hear that. And um, I'm you. not really sure how you can do all that acting and do your day labor job, um, but <laughs> I, I, I feel like uh, you you must be constantly going. Uh, I find I, I try and find a way. I try and find a way as much as I can. Yeah. So so is there? Um, a significant person in your life or uh do you have time for that uh i'm afraid there is, i haven't found the right one yet all right well there you go ladies yeah he's he's <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how many single ladies watch this episode you know watch my show so you know you just you, you, miss, you never know um so matthew before we've got about you know a few minutes to go here um sure. i, I want to make sure that as I told you, you know, before we started, that this is your story, and I want your story to be sure. told. So, have we missed anything that you want people to know, or is there advice that you have, or anything else that you want to get to make sure that gets out there? I'd probably say, um, with regards to those who are within their lives um, having struggles with autism. Don't be afraid to speak out about it. I mean, my, my biggest advice is, and one of the best things I did was able to talk about it uh, now. I mean, years ago, I wouldn't been able to, like, put it into words how, how I was or what the person that I was. But at the end of the day, as long as, as, long as you um, have, that, have that love and support around you, you'll be... I'm, I'm sure whatever life throws at you, you'll get through it. So please, please don't be afraid to talk about it. And um, I'm always happy to to collaborate with anyone or speak with anybody who who wishes to um, wishes to talk talk about their um, their autism. And um, always happy to help. That's wonderful. So yeah, for anyone, um, as you're watching this, I mean, everybody's going to be watching the replay of this. So certainly comment um, that you're watching it on the replay, because as I say every week, we want these to be shown to as many people as possible. And the more comments on any broadcast, the higher in the algorithm it goes and the more people it will be, um, it will be made available to and will have an opportunity to see it. And also, if you are someone who would like to speak to Matthew, Please, you can private message me if you don't want to put it in the chat, or if you want to put a question in the chat, um, you know, I will make sure that Matthew sees it. And, you know, we will both, either one of us be happy to answer the questions or, you know, like I said, if, if somebody specifically wants to speak to Matthew, you know, his experiences are going to be very different than mine. And he has a, a better inner knowledge than what I have. Um, and, and for that, I thank you so much for being willing to, to do that because I understand that even though here in the United States, or it, it might even be the statistic around the world, that it's one in 26 families now that are a family with someone with a special need. But yet I yeah. so often still hear that everybody that goes through that is still feeling isolated and still feeling like they're the only one or they're alone on the island. And I'm hoping mm. that that's another outcome of this show is for people to realize there are others going through similar situations and there are, and have gone through and are successful on the other mm. side and are, and are okay on the other side of certain situations. Um, so I so appreciate your willingness to do that. Anything else? I don't want to. I don't want to sure. wrap up. You don't, you don't want to wrap up because I don't want to wrap up. If there's anything else that you you want to share or say, because I kind of cut you off when uh, you were saying that you would talk to anybody. So I just wanted to make sure that I didn't. No, it's, stop abso you. it's absolutely fine. No worries. Um, I'd probably say the main thing is. Um, 
almost almost like a almost almost like those almost like those famous people who always go to you know stay, stay at home keep drink drink uh, drink healthy eat healthy do all those good things make sure right. that you're doing uh, doing education all that lot no yeah. no 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 nothing like that i i just want <laughs> i just want to say um it's it's been it's been great it's been great doing this and um in general i just hope that people just just spread just be just be uh um understanding loving and true to every true to each other that would probably be the main thing i'd probably say to everyone that's that's so. beautiful advice absolutely um so if you are watching and you have not subscribed to this channel and you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Like this page or like this um, broadcast if you're watching through Facebook, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you have found us today. Um, we need your support in order for us to continue, for me to be able to continue to bring this out to you. This is a, a non-paid service that I do or or service. I don't know that's the right word, but um, I don't get paid for this is what I tried to trying to say is as um, confused as possible here, apparently. So but yeah, make sure that you you're sharing these videos, um, you're telling your friends about them, you know, um, put my name out there for me to come and talk to you if, if there's somebody that you think would be a great person to have their story told on hashtag no limits, please reach out to me and, and give me those names because I, I want to share as many stories as possible. As I said um, early on that the more exposure we can offer people to see that their bias is wrong, the more likely we are to change hearts. And it's when we can change hearts that we're going to change people's attitudes and how they treat other people. Um, if you would like to, if you're somebody in the special education process right now in the United States and you would like to receive a free IEP checklist, um, you can certainly go to my website, ShellyKino.com, and it's right there on the front page where you can just fill out a form and it'll instantly be sent to you. Um, if there's any way that I can help you, I, I, as an, as an educator, education consultant, I'm happy to come into the schools. I'm happy to work with you as individual families um, and just make this whole process better. And as I mentioned, just continuing to make the world better for all, one IEP at a time. Matthew, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a great pleasure to get to know you even better. Thank and you. I so appreciate, um, I've, I've loved just, not just getting to know you, but also hearing the, the English accent again, because um, I do so miss <laughs> that. But um, thank you all so much for joining us, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.